Hi, this is Mike Rankin with Relational Intelligence, and I'm here with Wendy Rogers, the uh, CEO and CTO of LPA. Uh, LPA is one of the premier design firms uh, based here in Orange County, but uh, offices uh, around the, the United States, and California and Texas, and uh, maybe other locations that we don't know about yet. Wendy, welcome. Thank you. Thank yes. you for having me. Absolutely. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Good, good. So uh, I was on your LinkedIn and I noticed something that was very unique. And it looks like that LPA was your first job out of college. Is that correct? It was. Wow. I was a fourth year student at Cal Poly Pomona needing a new summer job. I applied to all the lovely different kinds of firms that were down here in um, Newport Beach. And I remember my mother saying to me, this is ridiculous. We live in the city of Orange. There are good firms here. I don't know why you wouldn't apply to some that are closer right. to home and you wouldn't be commuting. Right. And so anyway, I ripped the sheet out of the yellow pages, you know, sent letters to every firm in the book. Mm -hmm. And Jim Kelly called me back. You're kidding. At LPA. I started um, that June. And I have been there ever since. So this my is my 36th year. I amazing. Think. That's an amazing story. Well, for a and couple Jim of Kelly's years, still there. Yes, I was <laughs> going to say Jim Kelly is just a prince of a gentleman. What, yes, he what is. a what a man. So your story about ripping yellow pages uh, pages out of the yellow yellow pages. Uh, with my first job in 1992 uh, was with Guardian, and uh, in the insurance business, and and our responsibility was to go and talk to other brokers. I literally would drive to Long Beach and Los Angeles and tear the insurance, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, yellow pages, but <laughs> I would tear the, the pages out uh, you know, of the phone book and then bring them back and start calling. Oh gosh. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So good news is we have technology. We don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, you bet. So tell me about the uh, kind of the arc of your career. Like if we, if we look at uh, you know, nowadays, uh, so many people, they, they work, you know, one job for two or three years and then they move on. And, and it's almost like it feels like there's a cultural um, training where people feel a need. Oh, I want to work here a couple of years and then, oh, gee, I've mastered that job and now I'm going to move on. Uh, but but for you being, you know, at, at one role and obviously a tremendous success in the early years, how did that feel like did you ever have an urge to go look other places or was it really just you know kind of this steady growth well i think it's probably twofold um the first one is it's been a job that has always continued to challenge me mm -hmm. so i was given a lot of responsibility right out of the gate must have done a fairly good job you know um through different kinds of recessions and those kinds of moments where you know you really tested mm -hmm. and uh, knew that I had the ability had the ability as a young designer to be able to do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make myself as versatile and useful as mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. and so I think that was key. But also always being willing to raise my hand and step into new roles or responsibilities mm -hmm. just allowed me to keep evolving. And yeah. you know it was a matter of doing design early on. You know, being a part of the group that established K twelve at LPA and mm -hmm. really turned that into a huge part of oh, our I didn't business. Know that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that is when I think of you guys. I mean, I, I think a lot of K twelve is a significant aspect of your business portfolio. Oh, it is. It's uh, education's almost fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So I'm really proud that I was part of the group that kind of pioneered that. Yeah. Did a lot of projects, you know, locally that people will know at Tarboot Vitora and mm -hmm. Sage Hill sure. School, but also, you know, we've done loads of work here at Newport Harbor High, Corona Del Mar. I mean, just it's been amazing to work for a lot of kind of hometown schools in addition yeah. to doing schools all across California, mm -hmm. um, honestly, like yeah. from, you know, both ends, north to south and now in Texas. Um, but I said it was twofold. So the first one is absolutely about a job that always challenges you so you can always evolve and get mm -hmm. better at something. The second one is people. Yep. And that's just yeah. luck of the draw. Yeah. And, you know, and that's where I kind of really struck it rich, just mm -hmm. working with um, loads of people who are very supportive, gave mm -hmm. me the opportunity to challenge myself, but mm -hmm. were there to kind of pick me back up and yep. set me back right. up when right. I needed right. to be. Right. Right. And which is um, all part of the process. Right? It is. It yeah. is. And so I, you know, I feel like that's a heck of a legacy to keep mm -hmm. being able to continue mm -hmm. is, you know, a job that's challenging people, letting them really figure out where they fit yep. in their career and to move into that. And then just to have a great culture with you know, amazing people, supportive, challenging people mm. that, you know, we're doing great design together and, you know, really inspiring. Yeah. 
That's that's fantastic. And and so if K through 12 is uh, 50%, and I don't need the other percentages, but what are the other uh, product portfolios that you guys design? So we have eight primary practice areas. Mm -hmm. So when I say education, that's actually higher education mm -hmm. and kind of K-12 and even early education, mm -hmm. actually, all of those together. Yep. And we really kind of put sport and recreation under that envelope today. We've oh, really developed an extra expertise um, or a specialized expertise in sport and recreation. Mm -hmm. So that is both kind of horizontal in terms of the athletic things you would play on, but right. also the vertical. I think we've really become known for the kind of recreation spaces that we do yeah. and those kinds of things. So that's kind of a bucket which, that together. Which seems like a big growth opportunity still, right? It has, it's mm -hmm. been really exciting. It's been a really big force in Texas, I think, mm -hmm. getting us right. you know, some opportunities to build on just doing um, the kind of work that we were doing in K-12 there too. Um, but in addition to that, we have, I mean, we were based in a really strong kind of commercial workplace um, practice mm -hmm. area. I mean, that's what we have done here in Orange County. We're really proud of the work that we've done here with the Irvine Company, with LBA, yep. you know, doing a lot of really memorable spaces mm -hmm. that are here. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, I think of the ENC that's right here around the corner for Love us, the, the Environmental Nation Center, you yep. know, preschool and whatnot. So a lot of really proud moments here across that. And um, then recently getting into healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that was, I say recently, but now it's, you know, almost nine years ago. Right. Yes. And and um, mixed use. So we have almost nine practices. Mm -hmm. And what we now have is really a burgeoning one in science and technology. We're really yeah. proud to have a lab planning discipline as a part of the firm, which oh, brings an amazing expertise to mm -hmm. us um, that's really overlaying over a lot of the work that we're doing um, across the firm, kind of overlays with a lot of our practice Well, areas. I bet now, right? I mean, so it's almost like a, a, a strand of DNA, right? And, and once you have that, you can then see things through that prism into other practice areas perhaps that maybe hadn't looked through that lens before yeah and it, and and it's really having the expert in house who can talk to scientists mm -hmm. and understand how they need speak their lab their design yeah. speak their language um, and then what we're doing in that space to actually think of that relative to carbon and sustainability and you know they're they are energy hogs of space yes right and so how do we improve upon that it's really lovely to bring together our you know um, isabel who is our lab planner and then just how we think as an integrated firm about a more healthy and sustainable place mm -hmm. to work yeah. and so anyway it's a it's a really good pairing and we're excited about where that's going to take us it really is and and so talking about you know technology and and science with you know, sort of the environment that we're in and, and you know, AI tools seeming to proliferate, you know, every day. Uh, how, how is LPA, you know, sort of separating what's, what's, what's real and what's imagined on the AI side and how are you incorporating that into some of your practices or are you still studying it to determine how you can do that in the most efficient way? Interesting. Well, you know, we've always known that it's out there mm -hmm. um, and that it's coming. But I think what we're faced with right now is, you know, it's here yeah. and um, and it's going to impact our profession. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually I, I have a client who routinely sends me updates on what it's going to do to our profession, um, which are generally very negative. Right. And um, and then, you know, a lot of different conferences and things like that about what's up there. So I really just think this is, and you use the word tool, mm -hmm. about how it is we're going to harness information in a different way and how we're going to use that to maybe think, build ideas, reach consensus as mm -hmm. we work with clients yep. in a way that may get us to an idea yep. faster. And we'll, we, you know... If there's one thing I've seen in 36 years in this industry, it's that you have to continue to be agile. You yes. have to, you adapt have to be ready to adapt and, and change with corner. what's coming. Mm -hmm. And um, and if there's ever the point where that stops happening, I mean, you will cease to exist. Yeah. You know, as a firm for sure, as right. even I think a professional, right? Yes. So. I'm really excited. We're doing a lot of up mentoring. We have actually a number of young designers in the firm mm -hmm. that are experimenting and using it in terms of how we do a lot That's of our smart. renderings and illustrations yep. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're going to push and we're going to see where we we're go. We're going to listen. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we're going to listen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. No, that's great. It's interesting because I've been thinking a lot about this as well. And I've read some of the same reports that, that talk about that. And my current thinking is, and I'm sure this will evolve over time, is that by and large, we don't have enough trained professionals to do the work that we have in front of us right now. So if, if, 
if these tools can maybe allow the same people or the same as a percentage, the same number of people to, to do more work, uh, then, then maybe it will actually take some of the pressure off because I, at least I know with, with LPA and other firms that I talk to and certainly on the engineering side, I mean, everybody is just so darn busy and they can't find enough people yeah. to, to do the work. So my, my optimistic hope is that we are, once we become more comfortable with it, I mean, I think it's a little scary for everyone when you, you know, you put in a prompt and I mean, Boy, it just—it's like you're talking to another human, right? And it's a little, little, little scary. But then, when you really read through the details, and I realize just the—you know—writing a blog is one thing. Actually, you know, putting your plans in and doing rendering is—is is, you know a whole another kettle of fish. But but still, I think it still takes an expert and it still takes a human to be able to determine, okay, where do we go from here? And then how do I interact with the client on that? And how do I interact with the city and all of that? So these emotional intelligence components, you, you still have to be an expert uh, in, in order to use the tool. Uh, I was at my my daughter graduated from uh, University of Michigan just a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations! Thank you. Yes, we're very excited about that. But but when Marcellus, uh, the great you know jazz musician and, and and trumpeter, his whole theme of that speech it says, "Graduates, don't be fooled. Uh, don't be fooled into thinking that you don't need an education or that AI is going to solve your problems for you. We still need each other, and we still need experts in the field, and we need." the emotional intelligence, th those components are, are gonna be more important than, than ever. And I just thought, I mean, he got a standing ovation at the end. It was just a message that I felt like everybody needs to hear. It was really, really good. Yeah, I can't, I mean, wow. Right? I'm, um, this, this won't compare, I'm actually, so I was sharing with you that I was at Cal Poly yes, Pomona yeah, this morning, yeah, yeah. but I'm actually gonna be the commencement speaker for the College of Environmental Design. So I'm you really are. proud to go back as oh, an exciting. alumni and share, but it was really like, what is the message that I want yes. to share to all these graduates? Mm -hmm. You know, they're really fortunate to be in this job market and yes. have these opportunities. We need yep. so many more of them joining mm -hmm. our profession. But also with everything we've been through over the last three mm -hmm. years, I really wanted to say all the things that would give them confidence. Courage and confidence. Going forward, Absolutely. that this is, you know, the right thing and yep. what it means as they enter the workforce. And so it is both. And I was going to say, you know, I look at our, our design leaders and who we are, and you're going to need those strategic thinkers mm -hmm. about how they use and harness the technology for sure yeah. um, to be able to get us there. But I'm still humbled by what it takes to build space yes, right. because it's still a very humble human mm. endeavor and, yeah. when you see you know labor. laborers yep. lifting mm -hmm. masonry blocks into place and kind of what that is. So will that evolve? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, anyway, it's a yeah. It's a great profession, isn't yeah. it? It, it? It and one of the things that I've always been so impressed about LPA is, you know, and you mentioned it earlier is the people, right? And you you mentioned that you were very lucky to have some mentors that that really guided you and 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 pushed you but then also, you know, were there when things weren't going so well. As as LPA has gotten larger and, and in multiple offices now, what are some of the things that you guys do culturally to make sure that you keep that same philosophy uh, alive? Uh, well, we talk about what's happening in the firm. Mm -hmm. um, we joke or not joke that we have a 90 day memory, you that know, way. so yes. it's really important that you keep sharing stories mm -hmm. and, um, and that people experience that in each one of their different studios. I think, um, I'm going to be hurrying back after this for, you know, our all hands meeting that we have, which gets everyone together to really talk about what's going on mm -hmm. in the firm and kind of a town hall, a yeah. little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they evolved definitely through COVID. And mm -hmm. I think it's been really interesting as we've tried to work from being in one office to multiple offices, now multiple time zones. Yes. How do we ever get together to make sure we connect? Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably the most valuable thing we do where we're reinforcing every day about mm -hmm. our values and our mission and what yes. we're setting out to do. Yeah. And that we need to have that front and center. So we do it every month, mm -hmm. you know, talk about the, you know, a project that's in design, a really great opportunity, you know, what we're challenging everyone to do, which is to create, you know, a higher performing project. We're out there trying to combat climate change. We yes, believe right. firmly that that is something that we can be a part of and we're making a big difference. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, but you do. It's something that we want to keep talking about all the time. Yeah. So it really is bringing that yeah. to, it's not something we talk about that they're seeing it happen on their mm -hmm. projects every day. Mm -hmm. So for, for a layman like me, um, how would you describe, like, what are the initiatives? How do you, how do you, you know, combat climate change in, in the built environment? Because obviously putting up a building, you know, consumes a lot of resources and I imagine, you know, puts a lot of stuff into the air as well uh, in the building itself. So what, what are you guys doing along those lines? Well, you know, the first thing that we did was organize our firm so that we would be more sustainable. So mm -hmm. when I joined the firm, we were architects and interior designers. Yep. Shortly after that, 1992, we added landscape architects. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago, all the engineering disciplines, so yep. structural, mechanical, yep. electrical, civil engineering, mm -hmm. lighting design, right? So I always really just think of us as an amazing team. We wear one jersey. We really try and understand our clients. What's the value of the client? And then how are we going to come together as a team to mm -hmm. have the right solution, which means sometimes someone's going to be playing forward and they're going to be up front doing the heavy lifting and other people are going to take maybe a little back seat because that's the important discipline that yeah. needs to shine to be able to do that. Yep. Um, so that's really how we work. But the goal is each one of us, whether it's how are we saving water? You know, there are a lot of mm -hmm. things between water and energy. Yep. What are we doing to maximize how we can orient the building we call it mm. like kind of the gifts of the site knowing where the sun is so that we can the gifts of the site i love that term yeah well thank mm -hmm. i i can't claim credit for it dan heinfeld our president definitely yeah. has to claim credit for that but it's really kind of that first thought that we have about you know it's just good design is knowing where the sun is mm -hmm. generally mm -hmm. and then you know how are we maximizing that to um to be able to impact the amount of energy use the building right. has. And right. every discipline, I think, tries to understand how do they fit into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really lean on the AIA, the American Institute of Architects, has yep. their Framework for Design Excellence, which has 10 amazing points that I think every one of our disciplines mm -hmm. can see how they're a champion of one yep. of those points, yep. which has really made a huge difference. And then, you know, we're just kind of taking one thing at a time. I mean, there was a time when everything was about lead, Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, now a lot of that is just code, meaning it's illegal if you don't do it. Right. Right. So how do we keep pressing forward? So that was about energy use intensity, which mm -hmm. I won't get into exactly what that is, mm -hmm. but it is understanding how much energy our buildings use. And we yeah. want to conserve and do all those yes. things as much as we can first before we're putting, you know, active systems up on the roof and right. those kinds of things. Yep. And um, we were the largest firm in 2018 and 19 in the nation in terms of the amount of energy use reduction that we've You're seen kidding. across our whole portfolio. I think when the I numbers come out for 2022, we're gonna be right up there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a goal to reduce energy use by 80%. Uh, I think every firm in the US is struggling to get there. Yes. It's a pretty audacious mm -hmm. goal, but we're working really hard. And we're getting ready and taking on now is carbon. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's gonna be a really big deal as we look at the impact of carbon, building reuse, you know, both, um, you know, operational, how we live, mm -hmm. how we travel, and then embodied what's in all the building materials yes, that we use every right, day. Right, right, yeah. That that's is a, that's a lofty goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's exciting but to be a part, of the, part of the solution, right? I think for yeah. many people who aren't, you know, we see the, the media images. I mean, we can feel the difference in the weather from even 20 years ago. And, uh, and, and, and yet we probably feel a little helpless. I mean, you could drive a Prius or a Tesla, but then outside of that, it's okay. I recycle my, you know, my, my trash, but, but to be really involved in, in, in solutions that are going to have meaningful impact. That's uh, yeah. that makes a, a life worth living. It's exciting too, because there was a time where our clients, you know, that may have not been their first priority. Mm -hmm, and you sure. can see just the evolution yes. over 35 years That's about right. what a difference that makes. Yeah. But really, we're trying to always make the right decisions to be able to increase the performance of our projects. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited by what it is we're all achieving together as yep. a team. Yeah, without a doubt. So talking about projects, what what is new on the horizon for you and LPA? And what's uh, what's excited? What makes you excited to get out of bed in the morning? Well, we have, um, you know, we've been working on the Edwards Life Science Campus mm -hmm. now for almost a decade. Yep. And um, it's made a real big difference as you drive down Red beautiful. Hill in terms of oh seeing the gosh. campus. It's beautiful. I think probably, well, and you don't have to answer this. I'm not sure who owns the property. Maybe it's Edwards. Maybe it's somebody else. But they, they should send you a thank you note because <laughs> I would imagine the, the values have increased dramatically around. It is beautiful. Well, appreciate you saying that. Uh, the newest phase that's under construction actually looks a little different. Um, it's down uh, on Alton, but it, okay. it's um, actually going to have the front part of it is going to be done out of mass timber. 
Really? So it's one been one of the first mass timber projects that we've done through the city of Irvine, um, which has been interesting. You know, it's a and different kind of building timber. technology. What? So mass timber is wood mm -hmm. construction, and wood is a really healthy and good material, has a low carbon footprint, so mm -hmm. that's good. It's not concrete or steel yep, or these right. other kinds of things, as long as it's grown in a forest where it's harvested appropriately. Correct. Also, a lot of the wood is laminated out of a lot of different layers, so a lot of the times they're actually using kind of leftover pieces of mm -hmm. wood in the mm -hmm. construction of these pieces, so it's... Um, it's just a very sustainable material to use. It's also beautiful, right? It's warm, just the way that it goes together sure. is, it's just beautiful. So I think it'll put a whole different kind of feeling in terms of what that entrance is on that building and it's a material because most of it generally is um, created in a factory and then it's shipped, it goes together very effortlessly it reduces the labor on the on the overall project site as it's actually going together, you know, because it's just been mm -hmm. uh, beautifully kind of put together. So we're excited and I look forward to seeing more of that. It's my goal yep. is to be able to do a mass timber K-12 school for a mm -hmm. public institution and really kind of see that kind of health impact, but also I think just something that's beautiful that also in time will be more cost effective. Yes, right. Um, it's a win, to win, build win all the way all around. The way around. Yeah, that, that's great. So you have that and then also you have your, your commencement speech that you have to write. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's that. And, and what is the date of the commencement? So commencement's going to be on the 24th. Luckily, my 30-year-old son at dinner a couple weeks ago, actually, this was almost a month ago, but um, he just asked chat GBT to yes, write my commencement course, speech right? for me. Yes. So yeah, it was easy. So you're 80% of the way there. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. shameful. It was shameful. <laughs> But it is remarkable. Yeah. Like I said, it's still it's going to need your going to need your touch. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate the time, and I'm excited to see all the great things that you guys do. Well, it's a pleasure to always be working with you. We have a long relationship, and I really appreciate you inviting me today. No, thank you much. All right. Okay, thanks, Wendy. Appreciate it.